What's going on, love? My good brother. This is Brother Sharif with the Hour of Power. Go to Hour of Power, Sharif Hamid on YouTube. Subscribe and share the channel so we can continue to lift the mind, body, and soul of our people. Give it a couple seconds here for a couple people log on. I know people got things going on. Just got a quick message to put out to uh, let people know what's going on in the community to keep the momentum going so we can continue to lift the mind, body, and soul of our people. So as always, in the name of God, the gracious, the merciful, we give him praise and thanks for his mercy and his goodness to the human family. If all the trees upon the earth were pens to write with, and if all the oceans were ink, and then another seven oceans to add to its supply, the writing would still not be enough to explain the glory of God, for he's the exalted, all-powerful, all-wise. We confide in no other in our time and need, and we praise no other in our good fortune. And even if I live to be a thousand, it still would not be enough to thank God for his many blessings and gifts. He is one. We thank God for the Metu Netter. The Metu Netter is in writing came thousands of years before any organized religion out of the continent of Africa to show that we were a civilized and a spiritual people. We thank God for Moses in the Torah with the Quran. I greet you all in words of peace. To my Christian family, praise the Lord. To my Hebrew Israelite family, Shalom. To my Muslim family, Assalamu Alaikum. To my people in the streets, what's good to you? And to my enemies, to my enemies. We weren't drinking, we weren't acting a fool, we were coming together to build, to help our people. I hope you make that report when you go back to the powers that be and tell them that report. But keep coming back, keep coming back so you can learn, so your mind, body, and soul can be lifted. Talking about our enemies. So again, I greet everyone in peace. Assalamu alaikum. So this is Brother Sharif with the Black Love Movement and the Hour of Power. The Black Love Movement and the Hour of Power. Before I get into my quick topic tonight, um, Monday, August the 6th at 6 p.m. at Renaissance Park, which is located 225 East Princess Street in York, we will meet once again to try to move out into the streets to reach our people sponsored by the black love movement so again that's monday august the 6th at 6 p.m 225 east princess street at renaissance park we are going to meet there hopefully with the black and the brown family once again and um we are going to move out into the community uh to reach our people to combat violence and drugs and um the bloodshed amongst our youth all right, so anyone watching this, please share this message so it can get out, so we can get as many people as possible to come participate. Um, I appreciate those who tune in via uh, Facebook, but just don't be a just don't settle for being a Facebook revolutionary. I need you in the streets with us. Different programs and meetings that we have, not just to meet, but to put things into action we need you there we need you there so again just don't settle for being a Facebook revolutionary we need you embody especially to go out to reach our youth and to reach our people all right that is very important so again that's this Monday August the 6th at Renaissance Park at 6 p.m. we're gonna meet there and then we're gonna hit the streets hopefully the weather will be clear the last two Mondays it's been raining so that project has been um well, that initiative has been put on hold because of the weather which we can't control but i've been looking at the weather 
they say it will be clear this Monday around that time. So we're praying that it is so we can keep this thing going. Now, my, uh, and, 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 or one more thing, go back on my, um, I'm working on uploading it now for those who are subscribers on my YouTube channel. And for those who are friends with me on Facebook, please go back and look at the, the explosive, powerful interview I did with Minister Lavelle Muhammad of the Nation of Islam, star student minister of the most honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I did that on my channel last night, and that was an absolutely explosive, uh, very informative interview I did with him last night. So go back and uh, check that out. Also, next Wednesday, just keeping you, just trying to keep this thing going. It ain't about me. It's about making change. Next Wednesday at uh, 8 p.m. on local Access TV, channel 16, uh, I will have Miss Pearl Weiss on um, and maybe her son. We're trying to confirm that. She is the mother of Chad Murrow who was murdered, murdered, at a bar in Helm two weeks ago, defending a black man. I will have his mother on the Hour of Power next Wednesday, August the 8th at 8 p.m. If you're here in PA at channel 16, local access channel, and then I'll stream it live on Facebook. So that's next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Miss Pearl Weiss, the mother of Chad Murrow, and maybe another family member will be on the Hour of Power. She's gonna explain what happened on that fateful night that her son lost her life, lost his life, being a hero, standing up for one of us. So I am duty bound, duty bound to bring this woman on to keep her son's spirit alive. That's right. Miss Pearl Weiss will be with the Hour of Power next Wednesday at 8. Now, for the business at hand tonight, we have a wonderful brother that's been doing some great work here in York, PA. I'm just learning about him because I'm just getting back in the groove of things here in PA. I'm talking about no other than our good brother, Antoine Dorm, with the stick and move boxing ring, boxing gym. Antoine Dorm and his son, they call him man. Antoine Dorm Jr who is a future world champion. Brother is sharp, but his father, Antoine Dorm, has the stick and move gym there at 120 East Market Street, there in York. He has the gym. Now, I'm not no salesman. I'm not no grant writer. I'm a therapist, a counselor, and just your brother. That's what I do. But I'm asking tonight that we get behind this brother so he has no worries about keeping this gym open so he can continue to reach the youth like he's been doing, okay? I want us to get behind him. I want us to bring a full-fledged boxing tournament here to York, PA. That's what we want and that's what I want. I'm gonna say it again, 120 East Market Street, Brother Antoine Dorm has the stick and move boxing gym. He's been doing it for years, but the brother's been running into some trouble because of finances. That should not be. He is offering a great service to our youth. I don't know exactly how I'm gonna go about this, but it's gonna be one of my new projects. I wanna solicit sponsors, uh, hair salons, barber shops, black businesses, Latino businesses, white businesses, whoever is interested in supporting the great work that this brother is doing, that's what I want to do so we can bring, first so he can sustain that gym at 120 East Market Street with no trouble. That should be the least of his worries. Each day, he all he should be worrying about is training these boys so they can continue to box and be future champions and uh, reach their dreams of boxing. Hell, I'm thinking about signing up one of my boys, but it's a lot to it. We want this brother 
to continue the great work he's doing with this boxing gym. And we want to bring a full-fledged boxing tournament here. But it's a lot to that. You just don't say, we're going to have a boxing tournament and it happens overnight. No, he needs sponsors. He needs finances. And I know the mind of some of our people. Well, what's in it for you, Brother Sharif? I've never heard you talk about a boxing tournament or a gym before and you're talking about soliciting barber shops and hair salons and black businesses what's in it for you good question whenever we're asking money or finances for our people and if the people are willing to do it you should know why and where the money is going so I try to look ahead and think ahead with our people especially when you dealing with our people so let me make this clear. What's in it for you, Brother Sharif? Well, it is some selfish reasons in it for me. You want to know what that is? I love boxing, and I want to see a boxing tournament here. Because I love boxing. I love it. I grew up on it. My father took me. Uh, he, he was actually there. He had me there when Larry Holmes won the title from uh, Kenny Norton in 79. My mother is friends with Larry Holmes' wife back in the day. So that's what's in it for me. But as far as finances, I don't want nothing out of it. Matter of fact, after this video, if someone is well versed in sponsorship, how to get sponsors, how to solicit money so we can give it give it to this brother so he can keep his gym going so he can make this boxing tournament come into fruition I'll step out of it I've already talked to the brother talked to him yesterday I don't want a dime that isn't what the black love movement is about and that isn't what the hour of power are about what it is about is partnering collecting and collaborating and networking black and supporting black business. That's what the Hour of Power and the Black Love Movement is about. That's what it's about. It ain't about pimping no one and about misappropriating funds and all that crazy stuff that we hear going on. So that's what I want out of it in case someone asked a question. Well, what's in it for you? Are you on the payroll at Mr. Dorm? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. If anyone finds out, or if you even got an inkling that Brother Sharif is trying to pimp the community, steal from the community, I give you my life. I give you my life. What more can you offer someone than your life? I'm going to say it again. This is how serious I am about lifting the mind, body, and soul of our people. If you even think... Or if you find out Brother Sharif is doing something to pimp, deceive, take, misrepresent our community, I give you my life. No, no charges will be filed. Just come find me where I am and take me on out of here. That's how serious I am. I'm not a thief and I certainly ain't your enemy. So I'm going to make this clear one more time and I'm going to do my research, but I'm asking the community to get behind this brother, Mr. Antoine Dorm, who has the stick and move boxing turn um stick and move boxing gym at 120 East Market Street. He has it open from two to six during the week, Monday through Friday, and then nine to eleven on Saturday and Sundays. He's making men out of our boys and helping their dreams come true. He should not be struggling to keep them doors open. He shouldn't be going from place to place because he couldn't. He can't keep the doors open. And for my own selfish reasons, I would like to see a full-fledged boxing tournament right here in York, PA. Not somewhere else. Not them going out of town, which they'll continue to do. But why can't we have a boxing tournament right here? And why should we be struggling just because of money? We have the money, we just got to get behind each other. If we can spend millions of dollars on Air Jordans and all other kind of stuff, do, do your research. Liquor and alcohol sales go through the roof 
from starting the end of October all the way through the end of January. Why? Because it's the holiday season. And where has that gotten us? Talking about the liquor and the alcohol and the weed and all the other foolishness that we waste money on. So we should be able to get behind this brother. Again, some way, somehow, we're going to get involved with grant writers and we're going to solicit hair salons and barbershops. I don't know exactly how to do that because that's not really my field, but I'm going to work on it. And if someone knows how to write grants and knows how to uh, go about sponsorship, asking for sponsors, because the brother said that's what he needs, you could take this initiative over and I'll step out of it tomorrow. Because it ain't about me. It's about community life and helping this brother keep this great service going. So pretty soon we're going to be calling on barbershops, hair salons, black businesses, and white businesses, whoever wants to help no strings attached, to help keep the stick and move boxing gym going and so we can bring a full-fledged boxing tournament here to York, PA. That's what we want. A full-fledged boxing tournament with vendors there so we all win. Qui bono, we all benefit. Qui bono, we all benefit. That's what it's about. And I'm going to make it clear again, I'm not on Mr. Dorn's payroll. I'm not getting anything from this. If someone knows how to do this, you can take this over tomorrow and I'll step out the way and sit back and get my popcorn ready like Terrell Owen said and wait for this boxing tournament to come because I love boxing and I may sign my, one of my boys up. That's what I'm getting out of it. The joy of watching boxing and to watch his son and others around here, young men who want to box and want to do something constructive with themselves, especially with their hands instead of with the gun. That's what it's about. This ain't about me. And anything else that we're doing, the black love movement, the hour of power, it ain't about me. It is about our community. That's what it's about. Salute to Sister Tanya Larry and the movement and Brother Anu and Brother Ray. It's a young man. And then I'm going to get into my next quick topic. And then I'll be done. It is a young man that needs our help because of some strenuous family situations, this brother needs clothes and shoes. His housing is okay, but it's a young brother. I'm not gonna say his name. I don't even know his name, doesn't matter. It is a young man, 16 years old, right here in our city who needs our help because of some family situations. He needs help. He needs clothes and shoes. He needs clothes and shoes. 16-year-old child. We know what's going on in the households of some of our youth. Hence is why they're struggling in school. Hence is why some of them maybe have a propensity for violence. Don't love themselves. What spills out into the street while we got all this violence going on. This young man needs help. 16 years old, needs clothes and shoes. Contact Miss Larry with the movement. All you got to do is Google the movement. Brother Anu and Brother Ray with the movement. Here, look them up on Facebook. Tanya Larry, Anu Banks, and Brother Ray to help this young man. I'll be going by there tomorrow to make my donation. A young man is in need because of some strenuous family situations. Let's get together and put our, uh, uh, and get behind our people and be a family. This young brother needs our help. This ain't about no one individual, it's about supporting each other. It's a lot of different movements going on. We're gonna support each other. This is the real work of Jesus and Muhammad, what this sister and these two brothers are doing, talking about the movement. This is the real work of Jesus and Muhammad. The real work of those two men is not sitting up in a mosque all day making your rukus and salat. It's nice. Going to Bible study on Sunday and going and praising the Lord on Sunday. It's nice. But how is that shining light on those who need it? We got to humble ourselves and do the work of the people who we say we following. 
and humble ourselves. I'm going to say it again. Humble ourselves. Something is greater than us. Jesus said it himself. In John 6, 38, he said, I come from the heaven, but I have no authority except from the father who sent me. Jesus said that. So he is putting something above him. And in John 14, 28, he said, God, my father is greater than I, is greater than I. So if Jesus and Muhammad said many things similar, similar, but I'm just quoting from the Bible because most of my audience, but those who are Muslim, you know what the most high, what Muhammad said about Allah, God. He comes first, and that's who we serve. But just making it clear to my Christian family, those who say they follow Christ, he submitted to a power higher than him. So this can't be about me if I say I'm following all the prophets and then Muhammad. It can't be about me. Because even Jesus said that he submitted to something, a power higher than him. Look it up. John 6, 38. He said, I come from the heavens. But I have no authority to do anything except from the father who sent me. And then in John 14, 28, he said, the father is greater than I. So support, stick and move. Support, stick and move. We want a full-fledged boxing tournament here. We don't want the brothers and the sisters there struggling to keep this gym open. We want to solicit barbershops, hair salons, businesses, whoever, so this brother can keep his doors open to continue to uh, guide our youth and supply the service. And for my own selfish reason, this is the only thing I'm getting out of it is I want to see a boxing tournament here. I grew up on boxing. That's the only thing because I know people's thinking, oh, he's talking about soliciting money. What, what's, what is in it in for him? It's nothing in it for me other than I want a boxing tournament here. That's what's in it for me. And if you catch me stealing or deceiving the people, I give you my life. Now, August the 5th, Sunday in Harrisburg, Harrisburg, Lancaster, York, we all family. Ain't nothing but 20, 30 minutes to separate us. If you go back on my YouTube channel, you will see about three weeks ago, I interviewed two wonderful, beautiful sisters, Sister Kim Thomas and Sister Catherine Laguerre, who is the leader of Harrisburg Rising, doing great community activist work there. Sister Kim Thomas, this Tuesday, August the 7th, will be two years that she lost her son, Earl Shalik Pinckney, at the hands of police. August 7th, 2016, our wonderful brother, may he rest in peace, was having a rough day. He was having a rough day and uh, the police had to be called. And um, when they got there, matter of fact, the police was called several times that day. They never came, five times according to his mother. The police was called, they never showed up. So her daughter said he had a knife on a 911 call. And we suspect she said that to get them to come. But Miss Thomas said he didn't have no knife. They were in the back of the house. They pull up, no de-escalation tactics, no getting on the bullhorn like you see on LAPD and all them other shows. None of that. Put a laser on him, pulled the air conditioner out the window and shot that brother in front of his mother. And she watched him go into the next life right in front of her because of what this cop did. Talking about Earl Shalik Pinckney died August 7, 2016 in front of his mother. No de-escalation tactics. I've seen people, white people, right? We see it all the time on LAPD and these other shows. Sawed off shotguns. People at risk. The damn demon went into the church and shot nine people and he's still around to damn talk about it. How does that work? 
How does that happen? How? How is this person still talking about this? And others, when other people were in danger and they walk away unscathed, according to his mother, he ain't have no knife. And even if he did, she didn't walk away with one scratch on her, except when they dragged her down the steps. Talking about when the police came in there after they shot this child. So they're child killers too. Another child killer. The man that shot Tamir Rice, he's a child killer. George Zimmerman is a child killer. Darren Wilson killed Mike Brown in uh, Missouri. He's a damn child killer. Ain't none of them in jail. Bunch of damn child killers running around. Yeah. So Monday, I mean Sunday, August the 5th, at the state capitol, between the hours of 1 and 4, the first annual Shalik Walk will take place at the state capitol steps. 1 to 4, we're going to honor our young fallen brother, Earl Shalik Pinckney. 1 to 4 at the state capitol. I'm still trying to work it out. Sister Catherine invited me there to speak. I'm still trying to work it out so I can get up there. But I'm going to do my best to get there. But we should go support this event. We should go support this event. How many times have we heard this about our young people being murdered at the hands of police? We have to come together and let them know and let anyone else know when you mess with one of us, you got all of us to deal with. Until we have that mindset, this is going to continue. It can happen to you. It could happen to me. Don't wait for no tragedy to come to your door to get involved. Did you hear that word? To get involved. To get involved. Let me finish out. I've been referencing, referencing this movie for the, my last couple talks, and I'm going to reference it again because it's so powerful. The movie Get Out. I've been breaking down certain segments of it. Until we change our mindset and our thinking, we are not going to get out of this. Some people are now questioning why a brother just called me earlier and said, what's up with the black love movement connecting with the Latino family? I said, yes, that's what we're doing. Absolutely. It's power in numbers. And they suffer from the same thing that we do, and we are one. But it isn't so much about who you are. The power is really in how you identify. What good is a black person who don't identify and think black? Not anti anyone else. I'm going to say it again. What good and what is the effectiveness of someone black as a blackboard, but they don't identify is black. We got plenty of our Latino family. I was just there with them the other day when we did the big family reunion. We got plenty of our Latino brothers and sisters that know and understand the connection of the Latino, the black, the brown family. They understand it and that's how they identify. They understand that we all come from Africa and the only thing that separates us is a boat stop. They dropped them off in the Caribbean and they brought us here. Why you think them Latino sisters got them hips and thighs and tatas and all that like us? And back in the day, we didn't understand. Like, man, them butter pecans, they thick. Yeah, they're the same. We all won. When are we going to understand this? But it's how you identify. That's where the power is. What good is a Negro that don't identify as black? Like Malcolm said, a white black man. He said no one wants a, a white black man, Mr. In-Between. So going back to the movie, remember Georgina? Poor Georgina in the movie Get Out. The brother had to get rid of her because she was hypnotized and she was identified as something else. And when he got into the car with her and he was, they got into the little, y'all remember Get Out in the, in the maid or whatever she was, Georgina. And when he was about to dust her off because she had turned on him, she had really lost her mind. Remember what she said? She said, look what you're doing to us. Us. 
That's what she said, Georgina. She said, look what you're doing to us. This is all your fault. Because she was hypnotized and turned into something else. She looked like one of us, but her insides was gone. Insides gone. Do you know that's what the spider does to its prey? Talking about the insect, a spider. When the prey, meaning an ant or whatever the other insects are, fall into the spider's web. A web that looks attractive, but it's really a trap. Relate this to life. The spider's web looks attractive, but it's a trap. When the insects fall into that spider's web within three seconds, the spider comes out and injects poison into the insect. But the outside of the insect looks the same, but the insides are gone because of the venom injected into the insect. The insides are gone, but the outer body looks the same. You don't see no scars or no gunshot wounds on those insects that are inside the spider's web. The outside looks the same. The insides are drained out from the venom injected into them by that spider. The same thing has and is happening to us. Venom is being injected into us, mostly psychological warfare. And we walk around, we look the same, but our insides are gone, just like Georgina from Get Out. Get out! Get out from the mindset of this European style and way of thinking. Come back to yourself. And we have many people who are willing to join forces with us. We gotta be like that bee's nest. You mess with one bee, the whole damn hive is gonna be on your ass. No marching, no talking, no calling CNN or Fox News, they gonna be on your ass. Mess with a little cub and see if mama bear don't come for your ass. That's how we gotta be and maybe we can reduce police brutality. Oh, Brother Sharif, this is rough. Yeah, like I said the other day, we need a shock treatment. When you're on that operating table and you're about to transition, the doctors don't come and say, sir, will you wake up? Will you wake up? This is Dr. So-and-so, I'm here to help. Hell, you been lost you. They put them things, whatever the hell they called, and give you a shock treatment so you can wake up. We need an immediate shock treatment. We don't have a lot of time to get this right. It's going to take time, but we don't have a lot of time. We need to get on the ball now. So one more time, we are going to start a movement to help assist the stick and move boxing gym. So our youth and hopefully one of my boys can go there and reach their potential and their dreams, whatever it is, and get behind our brother, man, a future champion, and get behind our brother, Antoine Dorm. And we want, I want a full-fledged boxing tournament right here in York, PA. There's no reason we can't do it. We got hair salons, barber shops, businesses, and if some other people want to help us, help. We want a full-fledged boxing tournament here. We need sponsors. The brother needs finances. And it's nothing in it for me other than I just want a boxing tournament here because I'm a big boxing fan. I ain't on no one's payroll. I don't want nothing out of it. There's nothing in it for me. The Our Power and the Black Love Movement, we don't roll like that. And if you find me deceiving the people, I'm going to say it for a fourth time, you can kill me. You can have my life. But I'm not no thief. I love my people, but I hate no one else. I hate injustice. Hate is wasted energy. So people out there saying the hour power and black love is about hate and all that, stop it. I got a white family coming on next week because it's about justice. And finally, August the 5th, between the hours of 1 and 4, at the state capitol in Harrisburg, Shalik's Walk, we're going to go there and support our fallen brother who we believe was unjustifiably taken off this earth at the hands of police. We see it. It happens every day. Child killers. Murderers. 
August the 5th, 1 to 4, at the state capitol. Hopefully I will be speaking there. I'm just trying to work it out because I got some things going on here with my family getting them straight. And then finally, Monday, August the 6th, weather permitting. They saying the weather will be nice. They're not God, but because of God, they do have the technology to about tell us what may be going on. Monday, August the 6th at Renaissance Park at 6 p.m. We're going to meet at Renaissance Park, the Black Love Movement, and the Latino Unidos and Casa. We're going to join arms, lock arms, say Harambe, Harambe, which means pulling together. And then we're going to go get our people to combat bloodshed and violence amongst our people. Monday, August the 6th, Renaissance Park. Please come. Just don't support me on Facebook. We need you in body. Don't be scared. We got you. God got you. You are not to be afraid. Only fear God. I leave you in peace.